guys, so I'm going to show you the first little narration thing. We'll see if this works. Basically, we're building a really high gain um, ADSB antenna. This thing's pretty awesome. So basically, here I'm just using a piece of coax cable, just normal coax cable. And I printed off a ruler from the internet because I didn't have a ruler laying around the house, so I just printed one off the internet and seemed to work pretty well. As you can see from the video there, I'm stretching this out for about 11 centimeters. Um, I had to start at the 11 centimeter mark because that's just kind of the way the ruler printed out. So what we're doing basically is making six strips off of this and we're going to connect them together. So uh, as you can see here, I'm cutting six little strips off the little coax piece of cable that I have right now. And measurements are pretty important with this, but you shouldn't worry too much just as long as you are cutting 11 inches as opposed to, or 11 centimeters rather, opposed to about 40 inches or something to that effect. Um, these things have to be tuned, so you have to get it somewhere within the spectrum there. So I'm just cutting the segments into 11 centimeter pieces. You can probably see from the little diagram there what I'm doing. Um, gathering them now, and what I'm going to start doing is unsheathing it. So basically I'm going to take a uh, knife there and going to cut into that piece of uh, wire. So pretty much I'm going to measure it up, make sure that my uh, cuts are going to be accurate there. I've done it a couple times just to make sure. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut that uh, rubber piece off. Um, you want to make sure that you don't accidentally cut through the main wire, the solid copper wire that's inside because there's braiding around it. Uh, there's a piece of plastic, which is an insulator there, and then the main copper wire. So you want to just basically cut off um, a couple centimeters off of both ends there, making sure that you don't cut through the actual copper wire. Um, I did that once, and it just wasted another piece of coax cable. So at the very beginning, if you remember, I cut one end off completely, and I still have uh, a length of wire to my left there waiting for, uh, waiting for me to make the final splice. So that's just uh, me reminding myself, hey, I cut through it. So that's what you should end up with. Again, the total length should be 11 centimeters from one tip to another. And what you do is pretty wild. You take those copper cores and you actually stuff them in underneath the first layer of insulation uh, together and I use a piece of tape here you can use electrical tape or duct tape it doesn't have to look fancy just something to help you insulate each little segment and you're stuffing that copper wire in the sheathing between the first or the outer piece of sheathing which is that outer rubber piece and then the braiding, the first braiding that you hit there. You only should have one uh, piece of braiding running through the entire wire. Um, making sure that you don't make connection. You don't want to make connection with those two wires. So as you can see, there's a little space between those inner copper wires. So you want to make sure that you're maintaining that. Uh, you're making sure that there's no continuity between the two wires. So it's a pain. I used a cheap piece of cable. Literally, this is the cheapest piece of cable that you can probably ever find. So not a lot of room to shove that in. Now the good thing is, is you don't have to shove it in all the way. As long as that copper insulator is just pushing up against that uh, braiding, you're good to go. I know that in some of my segments, I only got a few centimeters in, and I went ahead and just taped it. So again, that copper is just supposed to touch the outer sheathing. So as long as you do that, you're good to go. And once I uh, got it to, well, the best part that I can, or the best uh, connection that I can with those, I just wrap it up, making sure that I don't squeeze those um, two copper pieces together. That's what you're trying to avoid. 
and pretty much this is what it looks like once you're done. Uh, looks pretty ugly, but I'm just going to keep mine like this, to be honest with you. I might build another one and put it out on my satellite dish I have in the backyard, but this is what I've got. And it's amazing how much, uh, or how better the reception is on this. So, just a quick little tutorial on how to make a really high gain ADS-B antenna. You don't need a lot, all you need is a piece of coax cable, and if you don't have the adapter that goes into the ADS-B receiver, uh, you just need one of those. I think I spent a total of maybe three or four dollars on that. So a piece of cable and the little adapter if you don't have them, and you are able to pick up, sheesh, a hundred times better reception than uh, the little antenna that comes with the receiver. So that's pretty much it. Stay safe out there because we're all in this together. See you.